Um, hi everyone, um, my name is Jiuhui Wang. I'm from uh, NASA and the USRA, uh, the Quantum AI Lab. Um, and uh, this presentation um, was prepared in joint with my uh, colleague David Venturelli, who's sitting somewhere. Um, I'm gonna talk about, um, you saw um, Robert talked about they uh, aggregated, they have this new cool uh, XY gates. So I'm gonna, from the application algorithm um, aspect, um, provide some motivation and see some results actually using these XY operators. The particular, particular um, algorithm family I'm gonna um, talk, apply this is called QLA. It's a quantum um, heuristical algorithms. I actually don't know how to operate this. Um, this? This is going forward. Found it, big green one. Um, so, I'm seeing different things, and it's moving by itself. Um, not up there. How did I? What did I do wrong? Yeah, but it, it's kind of moved automatically for a while. Um, if you go back, you hit the red button. Back. Good. The green one? Back to the very beginning, I think. Sure. Yeah. No? That's good. Okay. Great. Thanks. Um, so we saw that um, here, I'll briefly review. That's the definition of the XY. The first line is the Hamiltonian. Second line is the parameterized um, unitary. And I'd like to point out a beautiful feature of this XY gates is that the third line, the blue line, it actually commutes with um, the sum of the Z components of the, the spins, the, the qubits. So why is that a nice feature? And uh, which also leads to um, application-wise why is XY gate particularly useful? So um, when we think of optimization problems, lots of times it's constrained. And if you think about um, equality constraint and lots of inequality constraint can be translated into equality, equality constraint. And an equality constraint can naturally, when we map it to a um, binary system, which translates into uh, qubits, it translates into the preserving of the total sigma z, which can be preserved by the using the x, y gates. So it naturally applies the constraint. Therefore, this I'm flashing some uh, NASA applications um, of optimization problems that can make use of quantum, compute, quantum computing in particular uh, with the help of the x, y gates. So we live in the NISC era, meaning we don't have um, large scale full um, error correction, full tolerant computing. So we need to live with noise, we need to deal with noise. Um, in the quantum supremacy work involving a random circuit, the noise effect is actually kind of absorbed in the random part of the random circuit. Um, for other applications, we don't have that luxury. So what do we do? Um, at the very end of the talk, I'll, uh, I'll flash some advanced qubit routing algorithm and uh, software side that we developed at NASA. Uh, but algorithm-wise, um, there are uh, things like QLA, quantum uh, approximate operator um, onsets, and VQE, uh, which because of its variational nature, it's gonna, it's, it has some natural error resistance in there. So these are one of the earlier, um, nat natu naturally earlier things we'd like to try in the NISC era. So um, quickly to show what QLA looks like, it's very simple, it has a um, simple kind of almost periodic, uh, periodic structure in the sense of it's two unitaries, two parameterized unitaries applying alternating um, alternately. The first one is based on 
uh, suppose we're, we're solving an opt optimization problem. The first is based on the, your cost function, and the second one is an important thing, is uh, creating transitions. So standard, the standard QLA, we just allow, uh, it's just the X operator, we allow each qubit to um, roughly, allow each qubit to like flip freely. Um, so alternating that, so the application of this um, framework is pretty broad. Um, basically, a any optimizing pro optimization problem, as long as you can write down the cost function, can be mapped into this framework and you can try to solve it on a quantum computer. Um, so we've done um, quite some work looking at different aspects of this um, algorithm family, including what parameters, how do, how do you set parameters? We've shown that it actually recovers the Grover uh, speed up in Grover search. And uh, um, more relevant to today's talk is the, the, the last two uh, recent papers. It's about when there is a symmetry or constraint in your problem in QAOA, um, the XY operators using as a mixer is gonna give you um, much better results. Um, I, I'll run, run you by the graph coloring as an example. So for example, if you wanna gra uh, use three colors to color this uh, square with a diagonal, um, so each node has three options. So the natural mapping of this problem onto um, binary uh, variable system is to use three is to use three um, qubits to represent one node. This naturally, this mapping naturally comes with a constraint. Apparently only one of them uh, can be true. So this constraint is equality constraint and we can therefore explore using xy as an operator instead of x. So xy, um, if you're familiar with the um, um, operator algebra, xx plus yy on two qubits is doing this. Um, instead of two qubits like flip freely, it's doing flip flop. That's why the total, you can always see the sum is zero. So here's our early work on this is theoretical, this is simulation. This is comparison between, oops. Go back, go back. Go back, where should I point? So this is comparison uh, of performance using um, single X, the performance is just look at the height or, or the color, is down here, while if we use XY, it's almost, it's pretty high up here. So this is just simply coloring, uh, three coloring of a triangle, very small system. And we also showed that just simply using XY for this much more complicated graph, um, through three coloring with shallow depth, we could achieve very high approximate um, ratio. So if you think about it, why is that? Well, we know that we're, stay, we're trying to stay in the, uh, the having one subspace with only one, one ones in the bit string. Uh, but if you do X, we are actually searching the full Hilbert space. And the ratio of the, the feasible subspace actually shrinks exponentially with the uh, problem size and the, uh, with the problem size. So now I understand, we understand why we get much better results if we play with the XY as a mixer. Now, oh, in the same, in the same paper, I just, I'll just flash, we also show that um, complication-wise we can, um, so usually when we have an operator of this form, when we wanna break it into a two qubit, like a two qubit form, it comes with cauterizing, cauterizing errors. Uh, but we show that it's possible that in this particular case, if we focus on having one subspace, uh, we can exactly do that without, without charterizing errors. Now, uh, what would it look like if we actually run it? So we tried it on the uh, Rigetti hardware with this new feature of native XY gates. So uh, this is, I'm using a very, um, this is just the beginning of the work, so I, uh, my testing uh, toy problem is a two coloring of just n equals two, two, two coloring of a link. 
Um, everyone knows the answer. It's a trivial problem, but it's good for benchmarking. And also in QLA, if you do level one, just two parameters, we know exactly what the analytical um, form is. And this is, this is not, this is more like exact simulation. So analytically, it's similar if you um, ignore the wiggles. And if you run it on the, um, here I chose the uh, Rigetti, I think it's a Aspen um, 6 system. And in particular, I use these four qubits um, for this purpose, two coloring of two nodes, and applying QLA with XY, and here's what we get. I'll let you stare it for two seconds, and notice it's not quite the same thing. Why is that? So this is the approximation ratio. This is the, 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 um, the final metric we're evaluating. But if we take a step back and look at what's the probability that we actually stay in the subspace that we started with, in this case, the Hamming distance one, sub, Hamming weight one subspace, it is 50%. So that means staying, escaping the feasible subspace is a key limiting factor in going toward this ap application. What we need is, uh, of course, we, we can play with the circuit depth to some extent to um, reduce this effect. Uh, actually, we um, successfully um, booted up to 50 something, 56%, but eventually um, we will need error mitigation. Uh, some theory to back that up is, can't figure out how to operate this well. Um, so I actually did some simulation early on in a different work showing that in a similar framework, stay, the possibility of uh, doing X, Y, staying in the feasible sub, subspace decays exponentially, both with problem size and with circuit depth, QLA levels. Exponential is a, is a big word, therefore we would need error mit mitigation techniques in order to stay in the uh, feasible subspace. Now. Uh, a QLA involves not just X, X, Y, it has the cost function uh, Hamiltonian. So if, we, if I do a simpler test, just using X, Y to see how much we stay in the feasible subspace. And here I'll show you how much appreciation uh, we have on having the native X, Y gates. Um, again, I'm, uh, this is me trying to do a five qubit, four qubit system and apply random uh, apply X, Y gates on uh, random locations with randomized, um, with a random um, angle. So uh, we're comparing blue to blue, red to red. Upper here, the red and blue for, for five qubits, um, these are as if, so if we don't have native X, Y gates on the chip, we need to compile that into CZs. This is the leakage probability. We see it's uh, very high, 60, uh, 50%. But with native X, Y, it comes drastically down to 20, 30%. So uh, my take on this is that this is a great start on the long way to go. Um, what comes next? Um, working together with Brigetti, uh, we are gonna apply uh, some QA, QA X, Y algorithms at both um, software and uh, hardware level in order to make this thing um, going, going forward and work. Uh, there is some work in pre preparation that we uh, have some compilation tricks and theories for, uh, for error mitigation. And uh, um, here's just a flash of um, what, go back. The last line is just our, um, again, um, working with Rigetti, our goal in the next 12 months. Um, so uh, if you bear with me for one more minute, I'm gonna show you another aspect of, um, it's closely related, but it's more on the qubit routing compilation aspect, because in presence of errors, um, it's to our interest to shrink our circuit as much as possible. Um, so at NASA, we developed some, some compilation techniques. Uh, this work is uh, led by Davidi, and uh, uh, the more interesting one is here. I'll show you. 
uh, still using QLA as, as um, the, using the XY QLA graph coloring as an example. Uh, here's a movie of how you actually um, do the compilation and check if everything's correct. So you start with, um, we're doing three coloring of a, of a four node and the left side is how you apply um, uh, the cost function on each edge and the second panel is how you apply mixers, so those triangles. And the third panel shows um, the hardware architecture and then how uh, going further on the right is um, what we represent, how we represent gates and um, how you tune the color coding. And this big beautiful one shows that as you click through the, uh, the actual gate sequence, you'll see uh, it happens, the actual, actually where it happens on each edge in the, on the real hard, hardware graph. Um, so the actual um, compiled circuit there was, uh, we optimized it using the uh, software we developed, developed at NASA in collaboration with our planning and scheduling experts there. Uh, with that, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy.